thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search it with It happened your help. in 1989 on a hunting trip in the middle region of West Virginia. We were on our yearly deer hunting trip in the remote mountainous area of Randolph County. I was about 24 years old and was in on leave from the military on the family hunting trip. My family and friends have hunted this area for many years and I was very comfortable and familiar with the area. The road back had not been traveled for years and was very washed out and overgrown with brush. It was about seven to eight miles back before we came to the impassable areas of the road and it was then that we geared up and proceeded on foot. I would estimate we had gone about another two to three miles on foot before we, we reached the crest of the mountain and decided to find our hunting spots. The light had just begun to peek over the mountaintop when I cleared my spot and settled in. I had worked up a pretty good sweat on the steady pace up the mountain so it was not too long after setting and listening to the first morning light waking up the rest of the forest that I began to nod off to sleep. After going in and out a few times I decided to get up and move around a little to try to wake myself up. After about 20 minutes of walking around I stumbled on a very old wooden tree stand. Although I could tell it had been there for many years, I remember thinking it was in the best spot overlooking the very visible and open woods just under the crest of the hilltop. Not too long after I ate the apples and oranges I had brought, after a while the warm morning sun took its toll on me and I nodded off again. A bad smell woke me right up. The forest was completely quiet around me and all I could think of is what the hell that awful smell is. As I became more alert I could hear the slight rustling below me and what I thought was some faint grunts and whines. I decided it was time to lean over and get a visual on it. It was about 25 feet below me on the slope and directly in front of the stand. It was not aware of my presence above it. It was about five feet tall with long, dark, reddish-brown hair. The hair from its head down its body was of equal length, about two to three inches long. The hair went down its arms and hands as well as its feet. I could barely see fingernails and toenails, not claws but nails like a human. Most of its hair was tangled with matted and matted in spots as if it had wallowed the ground or a tree or something. I watched it smelling the orange peels and apple core, then tasting them. It looked around at one point as if to wonder where they may have come from. I wondered how long it would be before it became aware of my presence and what it would do when it did. Then I heard the rustling coming down from the top of the hill, loud rustling, and I could tell something was coming at a pretty rapid speed. I saw the one below me turn and look in the direction of the noise. It froze for a few seconds and looked almost like a statue. I could not see at this point what was coming down the hill. I was leaning to my right and looking down. I tried to move my eyes to the left, but my view was blocked by the trees that was holding up my stand and partially by the full brim hat I was wearing. I kept my eyes moving between the one below me and the direction of the disturbance coming down the hill. As it moved toward our position, it began to make noises like I have never heard before. I would ordinarily not be able to describe the noise, but I have read where other people have described it as a record being played backward. I would have to say that is a very close description. It is as if it were speaking a language, but nothing like I have ever heard before. 
The one below me sprang to its feet and then moved about 15 to 20 feet to the right of me. <coughs> it moved very rapidly, kind of between a run and a leap, all on its feet, though. It did not use its arms. It then started to bellow back at the one coming down the hill, and it sounded almost like they were arguing. That is the impression that it left me with, it anyway. It wasn't until the one above me came into clear view that I started to feel very scared. As it came into my immediate area, it moved toward the first one and began to slow to what seemed to be very cautious movements. Its attention seemed to move between the first creature and its surrounding area. I felt at this moment that it was alert to my presence. This second one was much larger than the first and it seemed very irritated. The bigger one was covered in very dark hair, almost black. It was very muscular and its arms were noticeably long. It stood with a slight bend but an upright posture. It had to be about eight to nine feet tall. It was much larger than a human. As these two creatures squabbled, communicated back and forth, their gestures were extremely human-like. I was under the impression that the larger of the two was scolding the smaller one. They moved about 40 to 50 feet to the right of me. At this point, the larger one had its back to me. I could make out facial features of the smaller one. It had very human-like features, but a different nose. Hair covered most of its face, but it looked to be thin hair, not like the rest of it. Then the smaller creature spotted me because it went into a crouched and then squatting position and looked up in my direction. Their chattering began to quiet and then the larger one with its back still to me went into a squatting position for a few seconds. The smaller one then began to howl and bellow very loudly. The larger of the one with its back still toward me began to howl very loudly also. The larger creature then pushed the smaller one and the smaller one sprang to its feet and rapidly ran off across the hill to my right. It ran in long leaping strides and moved very fast like nothing I had ever seen. I never noticed it to ever look back. <clears throat> As the smaller one ran, the larger one stood up and slowly turned toward me. It had its arms bent toward above its forehead as if it were shading or hiding its eyes. It stood very straight and tall and looked directly at my tree stand. All of the fear from before overcame me and again I prayed that thing did not come, try to come up my tree stand. I looked for an instant that I would yell at it, jerk or jump and maybe frighten it away, but I could not bring myself to move. I could not even bat an eye. I could feel my legs starting to shake and I became very hot all over. For an instant, I thought I was going to pass out or become physically ill. For a, mo a brief moment, it was looking right at my face. From what I could see, it had very large human-like eyes and very large round nostrils. I could not make out lips because of the hair on its face, but I would guess that they were thin lips because the hair did not stick out. It did not have much of a protruding mouth or jaw like an ape. It had a flat, fairly face like a human. It put its arms to its side and began to look around. It swiveled at the hips and looked in every direction. After a quick glance back at me, it then began to walk off in the direction of the smaller one, that the smaller one had gone. It did not run or act scared at all. It made very long howls as it walked and turned a few times and looked in my direction as it walked away. I watched it and listened until it became just a black figure moving through the woods. I could hear it howl and bellow for a few more minutes. Then I heard what sounded like something beating a tree or log with a limb or stick or something. 
After about 30 minutes, I decided that if it meant to do me harm, it sure had the chance and it was probably safe to get down out of the tree stand. I made my way back toward my friend that I had left earlier that morning. I never even thought to check the ground for evidence or anything. After about an hour, I walked up on my friend and could see his blaze orange through the trees. I was very carefully made my way in his direction. As I approached him, I could see that he was staring at me. <clears throat> he was sitting against some downed trees, and he did not move a muscle. As I wa walked closer to him, I smiled and asked him if he had seen anything. He was very pale, and I could tell he was a little scared and puzzled, and then he answered to me, that he was not sure what he had saw. I jokingly said, you look like you saw a Bigfoot, and he jumped to his feet and asked, did you see it? I nodded to him, yes, then he began to tell me what he saw. Apparently the larger creature had moved across the hill in front of him, crashing through the trees about 40 to 50 yards away. He said at first he thought it was a bear, but after observing it, he could plainly see that it was moving very fast and walking upright like a man. I said we should try to track the two creatures, but it really didn't take too much for him to talk me out of it. This really happened 16 years ago in Randolph County, West Virginia. Also noticed I have never returned to that area of the woods. Other witnesses. Two witnesses hunting. Time and conditions, 9 a.m., slight overcast but clear weather. Environment, top of the mountain, open woods, oak, maple, hickory, beech, walnut, and pine trees. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Stephen Willis. I contacted the witness on November 25, 2005 and spoke with him about the incident and about himself. He is credible, and I believe he accurately described what he observed that day. To keep it short, I was deer hunting in the New River Gorge in Fayetteville, West Virginia, and it was in 2007, the week of Thanksgiving. It was evening with about two hours of daylight left, and I noticed movement about 60 yards towards the gorge from my position. I raised my gun to view the movement through the scope. After holding it in position for 10 seconds or so, I saw a very large hand appear from the side of a large poplar tree. It was palm against the tree, and I saw fingers mostly. Then, to my surprise, I saw a head peek from around the large tree, and two large eyes affixed on a head if a creature I've never seen before. And I'm a hunter. Have been since I was 8. I'm now 38. The Bigfoot blinked twice while looking at me and then stepped back behind the tree. I viewed it for about 20 seconds while it was looking at me. My mind just couldn't figure out what it was and I knew what it wasn't. I had no desire to shoot it and very well could have, but my mind and body almost seemed to be in a state of shock while viewing it. I had to cross near the location on the trail out of the woods and I was effing terrified even with a loaded deer rifle. My hair stood on end when I realized that I would have to go towards the location to get out of the woods. I called my uncle as soon as I got to my jeep and told him he believed me I am a very honest man and would never lie about this. The thing is though I never heard it run away or move through the leaves. And you can hear movement from 20 plus yards off in these woods. It's like it just disappeared. I came home very shaken from the experience and it changed my life. Now I know that it is out there. It was very cool looking. About seven feet tall, it had very dark, large pupils. And around the pupils, its eyes were almost owl-like. It had brownish blonde fur and it had a visible face. It almost looked like the troll faces that you used to put on your pencils as kids, really, but it was very clean looking and not what you would expect. 
Its fingers were long and thick with no fur, and it had dark fingernails. I had my scope on nine power, and it was equivalent to being around thirty feet from me visually. It was real, and I would take a polygraph and swear on my life. Also noticed, no. Other witnesses, none I'm aware of. Other stories, I have heard of sightings in the gorge, but not recent. Time and conditions, about two hours before dark, cloudy, 45 degrees or so. Environment, top of river gorge in mixed Mesopithic forest. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Russ Jones. I interviewed the witness who has multiple degrees from West Virginia University. He is a 39-year-old avid outdoorsman. I hiked to the area of the sighting and was able to see the New River Gorge Bridge. One thing I found interesting was the power line right away literally at the location of the sighting. It is believed that Bigfoots will often use right-of-ways as a path to avoid humans and be able to travel long distances in a straight line. In addition, the right-of-ways create a natural edge, which is a prime area for wildlife to congregate. The gorge its area itself is very steep with rough... Report number 23733, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Sunday, May 4, 2008. This report came to SCSO from Lloyd in Wisconsin. I would like to tell everyone about my uncle's experience with what he later called the primitive person of the forest. My uncle was a police officer and part-time private detective for Racine County, Wisconsin for well over 20 years. He was well respected and loved in his community and as a police officer. This all took place in 2002, 15 short years ago. One afternoon he had a fairly strange call from a local farmer that lived along the Root River in Racine County, Wisconsin. My uncle could tell the farmer was very upset. He told the farmer to settle down and tell him what was going on. He began to explain to him that he had a field with cows and calves in it and the calves were being stolen. At this time two were unaccounted for already. He asked if someone could come out to his farm to investigate and catch the people that were stealing his calves. My uncle set a time that evening to meet the farmer. He took his longtime partner Dean with him just in case there might be trouble. When they arrived, the farmer walked them out to the field and explained his theory about what he thought was going on. The farmer figured someone must be pulling up to the back side of his fence line in the dark and putting the calves in a trailer or something like that. My uncle and his partner Dean decided to walk the perimeter around the field to look for any sign of activity or vehicle tracks that should have been left by these thieves. No sign of any human activity was found. They both thought it was kind of odd not to find anything, knowing it probably would not be an easy chore to steal a couple of calves, especially in the middle of the night. They walked back to talk to the farmer, and the farmer explained he could not afford to have another one stolen. My uncle and his partner talked over what their next step should be, and they both decided to ask the farmer if he would be okay with them staking out the field from dark time and staying until morning if need be. The farmer said, absolutely. They pulled their squad car up along the field edge by a few small bushes, opposite from the road so they could clearly see anyone walking or pulling in. The car was also camouflaged enough so they would not be noticed right away. So my uncle and his partner sat near the car quietly having a conversation about family and friends to keep themselves fully alert. 
approximately two and a half hours after dark, they were startled by a loud thump that came from about halfway across the field. But he said closer to the field edge that ran close to the woods and the Root River. My uncle whispered to his partner and said, Someone's out there. We will get them. Grab the spotlight quick. By now the cows and calves were in a panic and running to the opposite side of the field toward the farmhouse. My uncle grabbed the spotlight from his partner and hit the spot immediately. Now what they saw shocked both of them. Like my uncle said, he's not shocked by much because of his training and his experiences as a police officer. But this was different. What my uncle told me they were looking at clearly in the spot was a creature around eight feet tall, four feet wide at the shoulder, muscles that were so large that no man could even carry them, dark hair from head to toe, and carrying a calf under its right arm. They both yelled stop, and when they did, it turned its head and upper body. Looking into the spot, it covered its eyes with its left arm for a second turned and started walking toward the fence line. Now when it came to the fence, that was about four and a half to five feet high, my uncle said. It just stepped over it with ease. It didn't have to jump at all, still carrying the calf the whole time. They watched it walk into the darkness of the woods and a little ways down the hill until it disappeared somewhere along the river bottom. My uncle and partner looked at each other and said, What the F did we just witness? My uncle said, Well, it wasn't a bear or a human. That was a damn Sasquatch. There's no other explanation, he said. At that point, they were both shaking and in a state of shock. When they finally calmed down enough to drive, the, they drove out of the field onto the farmer's driveway and sat there not saying a thing. Dean finally spoke and, and asked my uncle, What the hell are we going to write on the report? They decided to write up the report saying that an unidentified animal was spotted and was the cause of the farmer's missing calves. Case solved. Now they did return to the farmer's home after working hours and told the farmer what actually took place. He was shocked but knew both my uncle and Dean and believed them one hundred percent. They also told him if any more calves go missing to give them a call and no one else but them. The farmer did not call after that night. Maybe the Sasquatch moved on and after being caught by them in the field. No one really knows. After that life-changing experience, my uncle and his partner were true believers in what he called the primitive people of the forest. He told my family this story often and right up to tell them he passed away four years ago. My family and I all know to that these creatures do exist, knowing that my uncle had integrity and honesty. My uncle was lucky enough to experience another primitive person a few, few years after his first encounter while out hunting in the mountains of Wisconsin. But that is an experience that I can tell everyone about at another time. Thank you and God bless. Report number 7568 submitted by witness on Monday, December fifteenth, two 2003. U.S. Air Force retiree encounters Bigfoot in Sulphur River Bottoms near Cooper Lake. Year 1995. Season Fall. State Texas. County Delta County. Location details north off Texas Highway 71 on South Sulphur River and east from FM 1531 between Middle Sulphur and South Sulphur River. Most sightings were seen at the end of County Road 2070 onto the Cooper Lake area, the nearest town, Midway, Commerce, and Cooper. Nearest road, Texas Highway 71. Observed, I was born in 1936 and grew up on a farm in Delta County. 
While working in the field, we would see what we referred to as the nude woman. It was a large animal walking upright along the edge of woods and never coming completely out in the open. I left in 1954 to serve my country for 23 years and returning to the same area that I grew up in. Sometime in the mid-1980s, after a heavy rain with flooding, my baby brother found footprints where this animal had departed the water and walked around in the mud. In the early 1990s, my dad, mom and dad were traveling down Texas 71 in Delta County, and just before crossing the South Sulphur River, a large man-like animal walked across the road in front of them and stepping across the fence and heading north. Again in the 1990s, my son-in-law and myself had a couple of encounters with a large animal walking through trees and waist-deep water while we were duck hunting in what is now Cooper Lake. Around 1995, while checking my cattle about 10 p.m., I encountered a rather large man-like animal. Looked to be about eight feet tall in my light, and he went one way and I the other. One never hears of this animal any longer, and the only wild animals you see now is wild boar and black panther. Also noticed none. Other stories, just the one within Delta County where it picked up a pig, see report number 638. Time and conditions, duck hunt, shaded area of large oak trees and a.m. and p.m. with cattle 10 p.m. Environment 10 p.m. my pasture was cleared and just off Cooper Lake project. Other were with heavy oak trees and water. Follow-up investigation report. The witness of report number 638 referred me to this witness whom I found to be highly credible. After our initial conversation, I urged him to file a report based on his experiences in Delta County into the 1990s. The nude woman that the witness referred to was some sort of hairy creature that used to dart in and out of the woods by the cotton fields back in the 1940s. The witness told me that the creature was seen often. The witness said that no one knew for sure that it was female, nude woman was just a local name given to the animal by those who had seen it. The witness and his son-in-law encountered a large, dark figure in the creek bottoms of Cooper Lake. The witness said the shadowy figure never completely showed itself to the men, but made plenty of noise. The witness said it was a shame that he and his son-in-law felt compelled to leave the area even though they carried 12 gauge shotguns with them. Apparently the fear that they felt was enough to overcome any feeling of security in having weapons. The witness's final encounter with what he considered to be a Bigfoot occurred in 1995 as he was attempting to find a cow in the pecan thicket. In the beam of his flashlight he saw a huge mass of hair just several yards away. The witness said that he smelled a urine smell like when a dog wets on itself. The witness said that he stands six feet six inches and the thing towered over him. He judged the animal to be around eight feet in height. The witness stated that the encounter lasted mere seconds as both he and the creature hurriedly turned and fled the area. The witness heard no sounds from the creature. The witness believes that the area is no longer a dwelling place for the creatures. He said that he has heard of no recent encounters and he has not experienced anything that may be connected to Bigfoot in recent years. He said he always believed that the area was only a transient place of habitat for the Bigfoot. Merry Christmas, everyone! Report number 7421, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Thursday, November 20th, 2003. Classic sighting on Wooded Main Road. Year of Encounter, 
1998. Season, summer. Month, July. Date, third. State, Maine. County, Oxford County. Nearest town, Wilson's Mills, Maine. Nearest road, Route 16. Observed. My boyfriend and two sons, age 5 and 10, were camping in Upton, Maine. On July 3, 1998, we took a ride into Parmacini Lake. The road to get there is off Route 16 in Wilson's Mills, Maine. We drove around most of the day, stopped for a cookout on someone's lot, and then headed out in the early afternoon. It was before 4 p.m. We were riding in a truck, my friend driving and the two boys in the middle, and I was on the passenger side. We came out of what I would call a wooded area at the top of a small hill. The hill rounded a small corner and then straightened out at the bottom. The entire area on the right side was an open area at the bottom. The left side was wooded. There were no vehicles around there or anywhere for that matter. Just as we rounded, we could see at the very bottom of the slight downgrade, approximately 100 to 150 yards, we both saw it at the same time. He looked at me immediately and said, What did you just see? I looked at him and without even thinking and said, Saskatchewan! What we saw was something unimaginable. The creature was standing on two legs, was very tall, approximately seven feet, skinny, and was totally covered with long brown fur. What was amazing was this creature never even acknowledged that we were coming towards him in the truck. Although we were not close enough to hit it, it never acknowledged it. The other amazing thing was that its strides were huge. It took it probably three strides to cross the dirt road, which was wide enough for two vehicles. Its gait was very stoic. We got down to the bottom within seconds. We slowed right down almost to a stop and looked into the woods. There was nothing in there. My boyfriend wanted to stop, but I wouldn't let him because of the children. We also stopped discussing it at the time in fear of scaring the kids. There were no tracks on the ground. We intended to return the next day to see if we could track anything, but it rained really hard that night, so we figured any tracks were gone. I told this story to very few people because I know it's hard to believe. I did tell one of the foresters that worked where I did. This road we went on is gated and I was able to get a key from my employer. This is why I mentioned it to the forester. I was hoping maybe he had heard similar stories. The creature was on Bose Buck Mountain and headed towards Aziscohos Lake. Also in that area was an old gate near mile marker number 12. Also noticed, just the fact that this creature was walking and proceeded to cross the dirt road without acknowledging anything, just straight large strides, and then it was gone. Other witnesses, two adults, driving through the area and heading back to camp. Other stories, no. Time and conditions, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. It was a beautiful, clear summer day with a slight breeze. Environment, open hard, hardwood forest, mile marker number 12, an old gate. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Bill D. This is a classic Sasquatch sighting and is representative of the majority of sightings made all across the country, including northern New England. Although many reports of this type will mention the animal taking a quick look in the direction of the witness, the lack of reaction to the approaching vehicle is not atypical behavior for an animal wishing to be non-confrontational. The avoidance of eye contact and rapid stride out of view is the most typical Sasquatch response to a human witness. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. 
If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in the description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go.